awesome man i i are you ever planning to come here it would be nice um i haven't had plans um i i do want to uh go visit ethiopia which also uh russia and ethiopians have a great relation with each other um but uh, i do love i'm <laughs> The first yeah, time I hear yeah, that. there's a lot of Russians that'll go on pilgrimage to Ethiopia just because um, they they're both out of the two communions of Orthodoxy. They're both the most uh, strict <laughs> and traditional. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'd love to see Russia just because I like the colder climate. I live in Maine in the U.S., which is uh, the one of the other than Alaska, obviously one of the most northern states in the U.S. Um, so we're like zone uh usda zone 5 uh b i think is what it is so okay we get the right. negative 20 <laughs> wow <laughs> okay awesome i'm i'm traveling south because i'm <laughs> extending the winter i mean extending the summer <laughs> by, yeah, by passing yeah. the winter it's been really nice because i've been traveling through the orange autumn uh, in the mountains and now I'm heading right south and it's all green again <laughs> it's so good <laughs> yeah it's so pretty I wish I could share with you guys where I've been to all these places um, but yeah if we we get some time but it's all on in my stories in telegram if you check my stories you, you'll see it like my name if you just add me to your contact and then you'll see me on top and then just click on me my picture and then you'll see all my stories. Just short little seven, 10 second videos. Um, been traveling along the Caucasian mountain range that runs parallel to Black Sea. Very pretty. But anyway, who else wants to go and share about where you guys from? That's been the request. Yeah, I'll, I'll share. Hi, everybody. Hey, I missed last week. Um, I live in Boulder, Colorado, and I have some projects going in Costa Rica that uh, I have some beautiful land down there. And so I'm really interested in trying to develop <clears throat> some hot weather, climate, high humidity uh, structures. So uh, super happy to be here. And I've gotten a little ways on my drawing. I'm still working on the top view, but I got my metric drafting paper, graph paper late yesterday. So I, I'm, I'll, I'll catch up as quick as I can, but super nice to meet everybody. Nice. And, and don't worry about if you don't catch up on the drawing, uh, you can always ask me during the next 11 weeks. Like if you catch up on it, then if you're struggling, uh, I'll help you out with it. And also for everybody else, we will not be using do your drawings to draw the the home especially the top view that's what you'll need you'll, you'll i'll be giving you a refined one anyway so any mistakes you make it's not like you're going to carry it through the course i'll always give you a fresh start every lesson with um well with with a drawing that uh, that's perfected actually i i aligned it out in rhino so it's very crisp but i myself I'll show you how we use our back, our top view, how we import it into Rhino so you can see it. But uh, uh, we, we, we will use actually perfected one. So don't stress about it. Thanks, Sounds Jason. Good. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Keegan. And I'm also enjoying the like prolonged summer. I'm in the south of Turkey now. And it's just beautiful. I'm in the city of Antalya and went swimming in the Mediterranean. It's amazing. And uh, I'm from California and yeah, uh, I'm, I'm into permaculture and I'm into building and I love, love the designs that I see from Elosha. So I'm excited to learn more about how to create them. And your grandmother is Russian. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we all have more Russian roots than we believe, than we know, or some of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Good to have you, Keegan. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Martha? Yeah. Hi, I'm Martha. I am in Southern California, looking forward to building a solar greenhouse. And I love the drafting skills. Okay, awesome. 
Awesome. Thank you. Brett? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my name's uh, Brett. I'm, uh, I live in Pittsburgh right now. Um, I have land in West Virginia, so I'm, I'm starting to plan on, you know, uh, building something down there. Right now, I just have, like, temporary kind of structures to just stay there for maybe, like, one night and when it's warm. Because it's, it's, I tried to uh, stay when it wasn't uh, too pleasant. And that was kind of rough. But, um, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, like, this is, you know, just try to get more clarity on, you know, what I'm, what I want to design and, you know, what to look out for. And, and uh, that's pretty much, uh, that's it right now. Um, also, I play music and stuff. So, uh, and that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> there you go now, where's your where's your land again uh west virginia um it's like i don't know What's, if you know how Morgan cold town how cold uh it it gets cold in the winter um but it's it's like you get the four seasons the summers get pretty humid mm -hmm. um so actually i think the summer's Kind of like the roughest time, I think it's just well, right now it is because I, I still got to like clear a lot of stuff out and clean up a lot of stuff on the property I have, but it's 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 getting there, it's getting close. Like now, I'm at a point where I'm ready to like okay, find a spot where I want to build something, and um, yeah, I'm glad you brought up the bio geometry guy. Um, I read his book actually, I read his book after I saw you interview him, and I was like, oh, okay, I didn't. <laughs> I don't know how to think about that stuff. You know, I don't want to build like I might have to figure out how to uh, measure that those frequencies or or what have you. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, yeah, it's um, I'm glad glad to be here. Just you know, putting it all together. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting, but um, also don't get too anal about all, all these things. Like, I mean. W <laughs> Vast and by geometry, I think we need to do a separate lesson on it. And I'm, I apologize because I'm not ready for it today. As I've been traveling, I'm almost where I need to be. I mean, I'm always where I need to be, but I'm almost landed in Sochi by Black Sea, where I'll be for the next two months. And then I need to look at my vast notes and compile your quality lesson of like key messages to take home. And I haven't been able to do that yet. So I'll do that either next week or the week after I'll have that lesson ready for you and I'll put it all together into biogeometry and vast into like one cohesive lesson that you guys can really get it like uh, important things because the, the whole subject is so big I mean Ibrahim Karim's new book is 360 pages and I haven't even read the new book but although the first book um, Back to the Future of Humankind I swallowed in one weekend and I seldom swallow yeah. so fast. It was really that good. But his new book is much more, much, much deeper. So um, I will compile a lesson for you. So we should have something quality so you guys can get into next spring and actually build it. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, let's not get too anal about it. Uh, but I will give you messages to take home because there are some important aspects especially on the axes um northeast west south northeast and southwest and all of those especially on the axes not to have certain things like 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 a toilet <laughs> on a certain axis really 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 bad um just to give you an idea i bought a south african home and we'll get back to everybody else just to give you an uh, introduction um but just you know as it rolls now I bought a home with all south entrance and south windows. Uh, no, I mean, I had windows all over, but I had a main big, big, big entrance in my South African home, um, and it was all south. Subsequently, I crashed my business uh, to bankruptcy. Um, I had all those water problems, disaster water problems. This, this water sewerage went up and flooded one, three feet, my downstairs two rooms. And, um, and the river flooded and flattened my garden and even went into the home and flooded 
inside the home and I lost like a whole tablet, Wacom tablet that got flooded. So I had constant problems. Now, something I want to explain to you from what I understand, it's like, when you become aware of the vastu stuff and by geometry stuff, and it's like, hang on, I want to make my home different. That means that you have gone past those, I don't want to call it karmic experience because I don't believe in karma anymore, but you've gone past that shit that needs to happen in your life and you've risen above it. Just you've outgrown it. You spiritually grown. I don't know. But you become you, by you becoming a, by you becoming even to this course and me telling you about Vastu and you like taking notes of it and like okay I want my home according to by geometry and Vastu that means all those terrible things will not happen to you if you do those things but if you didn't know about Vastu how can I explain it it's like I don't, I don't even know if there is destiny but let's say you needed to go through certain lessons. Um, and then you become aware of Vastu and you do uh, your home accordingly to the, that right design by not placing the toilet on, let's say, the west axis. I'm just hypothetically speaking on that line or going from the center of the home. And then what happens is that those disaster things will not happen to you anymore. But in the past, you wouldn't have been aware of Vastu. You would have just bought a home with all south windows and shit started to happen and you like you think it's part of your destiny but it's your home and your destiny and the way your home windows are and doors are are all linked together but when you become aware of us to you start changing things or even start balancing things because you even if you have the wrong entrance or the toilet or the wrong thing you can put marble on it and you can do all bunch of stuff which i'll brief you in the future and then those terrible things are not going to happen to you but if they're still meant to happen to you, then, for example, you design a house according to Vasto and your builders will fuck up and then they'll not get the sizes right or they'll still do things wrong. And then and then when you check, I'm like, oh, but that's not what it's meant to be. So even the builders will compensate if you need to go through those certain lessons. Uh, it's very weird. I don't know how it works, but um Maybe somebody else could explain it in the future, but uh, if anybody else wants to comment on that, uh, you're welcome to now, but if you can, if you want to. But I, I'll be more ready when I do that vast to, you know, lesson for you. But I hope I try to explain it. Did, did anybody get what I just said? Sounds real spiritual. Yeah, it's like if you need to have experience of losing money and crashing a business, you'll have... Uh, a, a home with all south windows, no northern windows, for example, which means that no financial income can come in, but south windows make you drain, 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 overspend, overspend, overspend. And a person that's not aware of us to will just move into a house like that and he'll be doing that over and over and over, overspending, overspending, overspending in constant debt and constant debt. And then when he becomes aware of Vastu, he starts changing. And then he, at the same time, he needs to learn that lesson. He learned that lesson and he steps up, his house changes or he moves out of it and boom, the, the spending stops. And uh, not the spending stops. I mean, the overspending stops and a bit of saving starts. But they happen simultaneously with your house getting either a to balance or moving into a home with different set of windows um doors openings and and just balance like for another thing is like the center of the home has to be cleared of stuff your center of the ho home is brahma bindu i think that's called it's one third of the um, of the whole width and length of the home one third that whole space has to be cleared of stuff so if you have like shelves or a ladder uh, you know it, it just starts messing up things um yeah but we'll do a lesson on it separately so uh it just become aware of it it just just that you're already becoming aware how important it is i never thought it was important i mean i in, in my whole bar architectural career i i didn't take note of vast i just looked at it i looked at all those strange diagrams which actually you place them on the axes by the way those diagrams to balance out certain energies 
I didn't think it was important, but because by geometry rang true to me because I'm more in love with the geometry. But if we can combine a bit of vaster knowledge uh, and by geometry, I think we can get a, a really good balanced home uh, uh, that's true for you and what you and what you need. It, it down to a point where if you do a bedroom in a certain direction, you'll start gaining finance much faster versus having your your even your head sleeping in a certain direction you know there's things like that but i'll brief you on that in a separate lesson um, you, you also had a, like a fairly lengthy section on feng shui in the dome course i remember yes we did so please do look at it so i mean i could even put that lesson out but it's in the dome course we had a feng shui master that came and attended our um, a live workshop in South Africa and she gave a three hour Feng Shui lesson which is all recorded thanks Keegan for um, for for bringing it up but we'll do that separately I need to be ready for it I'll condense all the notes and I'll like meditate on it and I'll get that for you so we can take the important things because they are important uh, if, if they weren't important I wouldn't be even talking about it Um but know that you can balance even any home with the wrong windows, with the wrong toilet, uh, in the wrong place, <laughs> um, with biogeometry and vast, so you can even balance your current space. But um, yeah, I, I, that's not what my focus is going to be, but you can. Um, my focus is going to be building new space from scratch, which is right. Okay, who um, who else? Michael, uh, you you asked that everybody introduces themselves. Everybody, uh, half the people introduce themselves, but you missed it all, so you can watch it in the recording. Oh, we can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Thanks for for uh, doing that. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm Michael from uh, living in England, and uh, I've been here for about twenty years nearly. Um, and I'm just eager to learn about uh, the whole process. Um, yeah. Nice. Did you get that? I don't know if... if they, they, can you hear me? Of course we can hear you. <laughs> okay, no, it's just I'm getting a message here saying my bandwidth is low. No, we can... Yeah, you're like cutting out a little bit, but we understand you. I do anyway. Okay, a bit of a delay. Bit of delay. Great. Thanks, guys. Okay. Uh, Penan Payanada. Hi. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Payanada. I'm from Thailand originally. I live in Switzerland. Uh, yeah, since I was 13, I moved here. I just uh, went back to Thailand this year and I bought a piece of land. So I thought, you know, I would like to have some project um, over there in Thailand because here is uh, the land are uh, very expensive. It's not possible to buy one, like, you know, the big piece of land. So I uh, kind of have, I've been studying a little bit about the some architecture, you know, the modernized architecture and ancient knowledge and stuff like that. And you can, uh, you know, um, doing some air condition, the, the, the house, the cooling house, like in, in the heat, um, uh, climate, you know, in the hot climate, mm -hmm. that that would be also possible. I would also like to do something like that. Okay, so j just to just to bring up something, two things uh, on about cooling the home in a hot climate. What I've seen in California that Nadir Khalili did from Cal Earth Institute, they had that. If you look at the, um, and in one of the lessons we're going to be looking at the blueprints of uh, his moon cocoon. It's got like a. a a, a, a wind shaft, yeah, wind shaft that goes down, and it uh, it enters into like a big window inside the home, and inside that thing, like um, maybe we should try and look at it uh, quickly. Pull it up now. Moon cocoon, uh, cal earth. Yeah, here we go. So, Shil, while you're looking it up, I might add something. I grew up in Southern California, and I've certainly been out to Cal Earth. Um, I know that places like Costa Rica and Thailand, 
the humidity levels are so much higher that wind scoops alone are not going to do any cooling for us. They'll help mm -hmm. a little bit, but we need to have some more advanced systems uh, as in like maybe buried uh, uh, geothermal type cooling systems under the ground. That's something I'm certainly interested in. I'm, okay. I'm, uh, I've learned about the ancient Persian um, building system in the past. They're using um, water under the ground and then air and water, you know, so that the air can come in and the <clears throat> into the building and then it's just going out. Or they have like wind catcher, uh, mm -hmm. sort of, um, uh, what do you call that? You know, like a, uh, like, like, yeah, like that one. I'm not sure how to call that. So yeah. like a wind catcher on all directions and also the other way is just underground that they have water, you know, just like a, when they build a pyramid for the electricity and stuff. Yeah, right. 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 Mm -hmm. Another thing, what they did in South Africa, um, something to investigate and we need to make a prototype um, is a double brick wall. Okay. Bricks in a chest pattern, one missing, one there. Chick, chick, chick. Two layers with a space, I don't know, like what, 15 centimeters or something in between. A chicken wire, chicken wire, and the fillet was charcoal, was was by char charcoal I, I don't know but that's what i've seen and the drip water drip irrigation through it so, and that thing is maybe two by two meters and that was the fridge the the air would evaporate and through that evaporation the charcoal will just drop the temperature right down and um uh, so we can play with that, but maybe even adding a little bit of extra fan to it. I don't know, but it needs to be, it needs to be prototyped, but that could be a really, uh, good way to, to get rid of it, um, yeah, uh, to, to, to drop the temperature. And also yesterday I watched a video which frightened me on, um, mold inside the home. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to show you uh if i can find it hold on um history um yeah here we go uh because that's also important because you guys speak of costa rica and and uh here just something you need to be aware of. I'm sorry, I'm jumping a little bit, but um, can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this guy's paid 10, no, a million dollars for this home. And uh, yeah, it's just this, uh, it's uh, acrete and don't judge acrete is because acrete doesn't need to be like that. So the expertise that the guys have done for him is that his foundation is sucking in water from the bottom. Well, the foundation, there's no, there's no water break between a hydro break or whatever you call it between the walls of acrete and, um, and uh, the foundation. So capillary action, which means that the water goes up the wall against gravity uh, into a porous material like acrete um so basically he used this tool uh to walk around and he found out that it actually wasn't that although that could have been a problem in, in the future be very very aware of the foundations how you do it take extra care because i also messed up i also messed up so this is what happens on the roof they made a flat roof yeah like that and um you know, I don't know the leaves or something. They blocked up the um, the 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 water so that it couldn't leave the roof. And can you see they're opening up the um, waterproofing layer? And underneath the waterproofing layer, it's just all soft. It's look at that. There is water. Uh, yeah, yeah. You guys got the point. The, the the problem was in the roof and not in the foundation. So just be be aware of it because um, um, you know we can talk about sacred geometry and biogeometry and all that stuff, but if you mess up on these basics, biogeometry and vast ain't gonna help you. So this is very very serious, especially like what happened with me. I made um, 
You know, I looked at my granules from Earthships, how they were doing in Africa. They used the one one layer of plastic just to wrap, you know, for the tires. And, you know, it was done like not, not how they would do it in America. <laughs> you know, it was thin plastic. And I used the same thing. I, I used uh, plastic for my wrapping, for my uh, insulation. It's a very thin plastic. And I wrapped my bags in it. I didn't take care. So that I made my bags as foundation which are wrapped in plastic, which I teach in the dome course, and I believe in this course as well. But um, the two bottom rows get wrapped in plastic, then the third row gets also wrapped in plastic, and, and the third row sticks out of the ground already. So what you have is you have a hydro break, so the water can't suck into the bags, okay? Mm, and and I've done that, but I didn't do proper plastic, which needs to be a thick foundation plastic or something proper. Like, I don't know how many micron, but it's like, you know, it's thick. And um, what happened was the water sucked up and went up my wall as well. And the hyper adobe, which we'll love because it's so cheap and so pliable, like plastiline when it's still soft, you know, um, just for the, it's a cool material. Um, but it sucks water like crazy. It's hydroscopic. So that's something to be aware of. And as I mentioned last time, I would go for a tire foundation now. And if you're in a very wet area, uh, um, my granules can even ask me to consider gravel in the first course. Gravel does not let any water go up. Uh, in Thailand and in India, they just d d dig a trench and the fill it with gravel and then they put the tires or you know wherever on top of it so so that's also an option but just take care of the foundation um uh very very important because it's not something to take lightly i like you know somebody said or uh, or alosha said or you really need to research what they do in your country because in st petersburg it's so boggy uh you know it's a different story to California. What worked in California just by wrapping two bags, it's just sand, it's desert. Of course it would work there. <laughs> but if you're not in a desert, if you're like in Canada or somewhere it's really, really boggy or really, really wet, or like Costa Rica, I don't know how wet it is, but just wet. Just make sure that your foundation is proper. Um, uh, and like I showed you in this video now, the roof is also, you know, um, you know, these things you need to be aware of because the guy was about to bulldoze the entire home flat into the ground worth one million dollars because of, you know, that, 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 you know, your walls are like, not your walls, but his walls went moldy. And because of this guy's expertise, who showed him your nothing wrong with your foundation, he scratched and showed that your foundation is not sucking water up, it's your roof. Uh, so obviously, they need to remove all the, um, plastering work, remove the roof, the timber, everything that's rotten, remove, 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 and let the walls dry up and then fix and do things properly. And then his home will be a hundred percent. That's what good expertise did just to wrap that story up. Yeah. Anyone else wants to share anything at this point? We'll go, Heinz, where are you from? Um, I'm from Germany, and um, well, I'm a professional. <laughs> I'm I'm a retired architect. Wow! Uh, and I'm in this uh, subject for for many years, and I was just uh, looking up for some fresh ideas. And I'm watching your spiritual spiritual journey. I'm very interesting and in how you changed and it's very inspirational and even this uh, was theme once i had a job in a in a uh, ashram where there was an enlightened person and uh, there was also uh, an academy of wastu mm -hmm. and i always try to come in but never got, got a chance and so there's a journey for me, and my conclusion was that uh, somehow it's a kind of protection system, probably. Mm -hmm. And then there's a question, it's kind of spiritual, um, 
if protection is uh, is uh, needed. So, is is it a uh, if something happens in kind of houses, is it a reflection of my being, or is it uh, is it kinds of uh, of uh, uh, energy? And uh, to to come to an end, uh, I tell the story. This master he he has uh, was built a big big house from his uh, students for him, and they were very much engaged, and he was not. <laughs> and sometimes, uh, sometime in a lecture, he was some kind of amused and uh, to reflect to them what it means um, to have vastu. He, he asked the question, what happens when a good man enters a house from the south? Mm -hmm. Remains a good man. So, mm -hmm. and that was some kind of new thinking for me. And uh, I'm not at the end with this question. So I take part here. Maybe I come a little bit further. Yeah, it's very important what you said. That's also what I tried to touch on last last week is that hmm. uh, I believe that, uh, you know, if you generating uh, love through prayer and connection to the source, um, you know, I think it's much stronger than all of that other stuff. I'm not going to lie. Yes, yes. and there, there are different perspectives and there are some of us uh, who need protection and i know what these buildings can do really impressive so if if one isn't in his presence and uh, in his uh, creator force so it could be very helpful to have some kind of this uh, building vastu, vastu building mm -hmm. but at the end i think there's only creator and uh, without limit. So the only question is uh, what what kind of person I am myself <laughs> and what kind of building should I have or, uh, or is it for, for my purpose? So there must be a point where this question isn't reasonable. Mm -hmm. Very yes. nicely said, thank you. Thank you. That's exactly what I also try to say in in, in other yeah. words that that, uh, that if 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 you if you really connect to the source to to God, then it's like all works together. You'll eventually live in a home, or you'll create a home that will in you know be on the same wavelength of what you need. But if you're not with, you know, if you, like Heinz said, maybe in the beginning stages, you'll need a home that protects you and, and, and aligns things that, you know. But at the same time, if there are lessons that you need to go through, you'll either be moved to a home that aligns with those lessons, meaning you'll have like, yeah. you know, things to the south and you'll start losing money. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's It's... It's like all to works together. Uh, there's the lessons that you need to go through on one hand, uh, but you can accelerate and grow through them by, you know, for example, analyzing analytical work, journaling down what I need to realize. Why am I losing money? For example, why am I constantly in debt? If you're realizing that you're in debt because you are indebted to yourself, that there's some way in the energetical, spiritual realm or physical realm you are feeling that you are not worthy or not good enough and you're indebted or you're doing the things you hate. You're in a job that you absolutely hate. You create more debt on yourself and you're drowning more in the outer debt yeah, yes. to the banks. That's yes. kind of what I'm trying to say. So the, yes, the, in that situation, you lose your creator force. So it might be helpful on the way to have a Vastu home. Yes, exactly. Yes. That, that's that when a Vastu home will protect you uh, yeah. against those things. But and, and at some point, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. But we'll yeah. leave the Vastu and by geometry. I'll do a separate lesson for you in, in a week or two when I'm thoroughly ready for it. And then I think for now, uh, do you guys have any questions on uh, the drawing part? Do you want to show 
like anyone want to show your drawings uh, the, just so we can see like it's working for you it's not working for you maybe some feedback we can go one by one whoever wants to show and i'll put you on a big screen uh michael yeah go for it I think you'll need to switch off your green screen thing. But try, try, show us your paper. I'm sorry. Oh, you disappear. Yeah, you disappear. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, somebody else goes so long. Okay, who, who wants to go? All right, I'll show mine. I just got started. <laughs> but nice. Nice. I only got a couple hours into it, but I got I get the hang of it. Yeah, that's very cool. Good. So I'm I'm sure I'll get I'll, I'll get caught up. I'm not having any problems. I, okay. I'm I'm concerned about the geodesic dome <laughs> from the chat. So when I get there, I'll, I'll certainly uh, yeah. consult. <laughs> there is a separate lesson on it where I stand next to the window and I trace it. You, you, you know, I, I trace on a computer. Uh, so on my trackpad on my Mac, I don't know if you have that, but you can do with your two fingers, bigger, smaller. And I sit there with a the ruler until it's to that right size. Um, I don't think you'll have a problem. Okay, Martha, do you want to go? That's good. So I don't know if it shows up, but this part was fun to do. The challenge I had was making it the elevation, but I think that just comes from <clears throat> uh -huh. um, practice. And I put myself at the beginning with a little pot of flour. So two size, two size, to scale yourself also. Yeah, uh, we'll see. And then yeah, the <laughs> dome part that was the challenge. I don't. I'm still rudimentary in that thing it's okay but but um were you able to see uh the side view of the dome okay but why did you print it so big yeah because that's my skill level that's as big that's no no, no it's okay it, 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 it's okay don't worry about it um it's better not to print it are you able to pull it up on the computer martha and make it bigger and smaller zoom in and zoom out into it i will work on that right okay i will okay. work on that so i don't know how the, the 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 zoom in and zoom out you might need to open it in a in a like your image viewer and um, but it mustn't be like zoom in where it jumps bigger than bigger it needs to be like a smooth so you can actually get it to exactly you stand there with a ruler and you get it so it's seven and a half centimeters or so um but play with it and um yeah uh you guys thank you also so much that you're also helping each other out in the chat i really appreciate it um yeah thank you yes and um, can i just add there yeah. Yeah. Um, I added in the chat there um, that if you just opened it up in an application like Paint, for instance, I'm, I'm on Microsoft. Um, I just opened up the JPEG and using it. And if you uh, if you unlock the aspect ratio and just change, you know, fill around with the sizing. You can eventually, you know, after a while, <laughs> you get to the right measurement. Okay, but it's so much easier with the Mac. I, mean, I wish I could. You, you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah. You can only zoom in on it in, in increments on, on the Microsoft. It's not ah, very, oh, it's, it's not very that's... user friendly. Yeah. So I literally had to change the numbers. No. You know, the the ratios. Okay, so like ten percent, eleven percent, twelve percent, that kind of thing. Up and up yeah, and up and you. up and up and up and up, and then eventually it got to the right size. Thank you, thank you. I yeah, did, yeah, I did get it, copy it from the screen and get it the right size, but I put it on the wrong spot on my drawing. I put it too far down. I put it. It doesn't show, but I put it down, and it needed to go up. 
Uh, it's okay. It's okay. That's what we, we make mistakes here so we can, um, yeah, it'll all come together because we're going to draw that whole thing on the computer step by step and you, you'll see it. I mean, let me see if I can pull it up uh, on the, on, on, on the course. Just, uh, but you, you you saw how it needs to look and and by the way we're gonna change to the another dome later when we're going to 3D. We're not even gonna use this dome. I, I decided to go into four frequency dome, which means that it's uh, one up. Uh, it's got a lot more. Um, uh, uh, it's got more a lot more um, pipes. Um, here, let me show you. So that, that that's that's what we got to eventually, and this is the drawing that I'll give you to load into Rhino when we get into Rhino. So so don't worry, you make mistakes. It's okay. Just just go for it. And this is not even the home that I'm gonna build. I mean, it it could be a nice home for like a gym or a sauna, <laughs> but as a home for a family, as I said, I'm scrapping the idea of all south windows altogether. That's why I've asked to it's really shook me because um, I've changed five years worth of all my designs now, and I'm as soon as I get to the Black Sea and I pull out my architectural table, I'm going to be working on something that's actually an octagon, eight-pointed shape of the home that has openings um, on, 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 on various sides. Um, <clears throat> yeah. A bit like a star fort. Yeah. But at the same time, I also understand that why this home and Earthship is the way it is, because it needs that thermal mass it needs to be closed from, it doesn't need to be closed from north, uh, but the way it's done, they close it from the north, but we still want the thermal mass. So we're going to up the mass on top of the home and we're going to up the mass below the home that's insulated below. But obviously for a warmer climate, you don't need to do uh, like all that stuff. And we'll be chatting about warm climate throughout. And if you have any questions, please uh, throw them in. Uh, because uh, a warm climate home will look very different. Although, you know, possibly a balcony all around, like in Brazil or something, Costa Rica. Hey, Jesse, maybe like uh, something that has a balcony all around. Or, you know, that if you have a nice view all around. I've definitely got some pretty developed ideas on what I want to do. And uh, there will be lots of, lots of openings, lots of airflow, and certainly... Uh, water is the biggest concern you're exactly right we get uh, i don't know how many centimeters but close to 200 inches of rain a year at my property and there's a lot of clay in the soil so foundations and rain and dehumidification are the main uh, ideas mm -hmm. but i'm really looking to do kind of monolithic pores like what aircrete harry's doing with um basalt rebar uh thin concrete shells with mm -hmm. uh, waterproof insulation, like a styrocrete or something over the top of that with no real prominent roof systems, but more like hyperbolic paraboloids and shapes like that. So that's some interesting ideas. So, And you can, and by the way, we had a student there that uh, drew that hyperbolic paraboloid during the course. So if you have any questions on that, I can also help you out. Um, um, that's you... that's the first design I want to draw because I'm looking at using air forms and I'm trying to find a universal air form that I can reuse. So I think a hyperbolic paraboloid that's kind of e equal equal on all sides that I can then use as a form and then move and then use as a form and move. Uh, so I would love any information you have to share with that. Okay. And I just want to show you guys, um, <clears throat> have you... I'm very inspired by Philip Block. I know I speak about him a lot, but um, let me show you something. Um, Philip Block, uh, Zaha Hadid Bridge. I want to combine a hyperbolic um, paraboloid with this idea that I'm about to show you. I, I, I touched onto it last last week, but this is this is, I believe, where. 
the homes need to go for, to make them easy. Can you see that? No. Hold on. Yeah, have a look at this. Now, obviously, um, it, this is a bridge. So we're not talking about a bridge, but we're talking, we, I want to use this method of design. So basically, pieces can be printed in a warehouse any time of the year um, with a 3D printer. I want to do them from clay. Um, yeah, so what's interesting is the printer prints it according to the pressure of, of how to the pressure how it's exerted i don't know if correct word maybe heinz can uh, uh, give us but you know the, the you know the pressure of the arch the the forces the forces of the arch so the printer prints it in the same um geometry as uh the force would be exerted from plate to plate then between so they strap all these pieces that they, they take them to site the build a for, formwork and this is where i wonder because this formwork is too lengthy uh, but you know if we're doing this as a business uh, you know we need to figure out a formwork that can be reusable maybe a blown up form of a formwork although, although i don't know if it can take the pressure i'm not going to lie i, I don't think it can take that so much pressure because when you use blown formwork, you use a you spray a thin layer at a time, and then that thin layer you can build up on it, or you know, and you thicken it up. These things are already chunky. And then they, if you've seen that, they use rubber plates in between them. These rubber plates are so any stones in the concrete don't crack the next plate, so they disperse the pressure evenly. But I believe I, I don't know. I keep on showing it to everybody. Maybe, but I don't. I believe this is the most exciting building system done to date. Um, and obviously, we want to add some nice uh, greenhouses and thicken it up because this is a bridge. Or uh, so, a thing to consider. Hold on. Um, here. Uh, and I think I showed it to you last time. Uh, now, keep in mind that bridge idea. And at the same time, look at this picture right now. Can you see it? Yeah, so that's where I want to go with it. I think, um, and obviously do my own design, but I think, but th as I mentioned last week, these guys, um, here, let me show it to you what it looks like without grass uh jesse this would ring to you um so this is hyperbolic this is right up my alley this is exactly the kind of thing that i'm looking at doing yeah now the problem with we need to overcome is that they they took six years to build this because it's a hell of a lot of rebar hell of a lot of everything and um i mean it looks gorgeous inside but uh uh, let me show you one more picture. But I just think we need to we need to figure out a way or a better way uh, to do it. I don't I don't have pictures. Well, of Osha, I know Aircrete Harry was in some of your videos, so he's taken your course. Have you looked at his what he's doing with thin shell basalt uh, sheeting and, and rebar? So uh, not can... I, I, yeah. Let's pull. Maybe we can call him in into one of our meetings. Uh, that that you you got. We can actually. Um, let him explain to us. I mean, he's very he's very open to sharing. Um, I mean, I can give you the gist of it. The, the, the basic concept is that he's taking a form. It doesn't necessarily have to be an inflatable form, but mm -hmm. those work nicely because mm -hmm. they're reusable. So you take some sort of form. You then use basalt rebar. And the reason you're using basalt rebar mesh uh, is because it doesn't rust. So the general reason why you have to use uh, three to four inch thick concrete is because if any of the rebar is exposed, then the rebar rusts and that's what destroys your building. Mm -hmm. The basalt mm -hmm. is a stone and you can actually build uh, an inch thick or potentially even less. And so you can build a very nice thin shell 
dome that's self-supporting with the right geometry. And then essentially, if there's no rusting, you then build up an insulation layer over the outside of it. And then like a stucco layer over that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, he builds these in a matter of a week or two. Can you guys see, see this picture? Yes. He drew this during my course or just straight after the course? Uh, it's a really simplified, uh, fast process. Uh, like I said, the form is the hardest part. So if you can use an, uh, an inflated form, that's a great start. If you have to build the forms, of, of course, that there's a lot that goes into that. But obviously, it's all in the geometry. You get but, great geometry with this stuff. And you can yeah. build a one thick shell. And then it, you're dried in at that point. And then you go back around and insulate uh, around that and then an outer shell on top. So it's, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. what I, this is, I'm trying to, I'm trying to modify this for a, a really hot, wet environment. So. Yeah. Very important to mention that, you know, we need to know the truth, like this dome and this is Harry himself said that Alosha, I'm going to have it in one summer ready, all nine domes. Boom. Five years later or four years later, he uh, uh, he didn't have it already. Although this is all, all blown up forms. He's like been on the forums. The main issues that Harry's been having, just so we can wrap that up, his method is this blowing gun ho, I don't know what's it called, the gunite of concrete, which sprays really, really fast. You know, really, really fast. But he's been having issues either there's some block or the pump breaks and then the whole hose concrete sits settles in it and then it just you have to replace the whole hose he had some serious serious issues with this method of so just to wrap that story up guys it's worth investigating if you're starting a bioarchitectural company that you want to build hundreds of these things but if you want to do one home or one dome or one paraboloid thing, um, just one, then it might be worth your while just to taking some bamboo if you're in Thailand, for example, getting a bamboo master from Bali or Thailand, and there's lots of them, and they can weave you the most coolest form based on your design. But, you, but not just based on your design, you need to understand how this paraboloid thing works. You need to do more research into it. But like um, um, Bali bamboo uh, uh, sacred uh, geometry. So I will, I will um, add as you as you uh, finish looking up your next topic there, he has solved his spray problems. He's using a very simple stucco sprayer, not a giant high pressure gunite machine. So uh -huh. it's, it's a very simple couple hundred dollars with the tools and a very simple process of applying that first layer over your shell. But at the same time, he's been figuring to get to the simple method that you speak of. He's been hammering about five, six years nonstop. Just no doubt. So, so we, we can all stand each other's shoulders at this point, right? Yeah, exactly. So what, what I mentioned to you, um, Panada, is understanding not just your design, because if your design is wrong, uh, they'll build it for you, but it'll collapse. There is a reason why certain things come down and certain things go up. Do you understand by looking at this design? Um, those things that come up and come down is what make it strong. So uh, you need to research guys like Frey Otto and uh, what is the shape called? I don't even know uh, when one up, one down. It's like, let me show you another one. Um, church. It's a paraboloid. Paraboloid, Church South Africa, Paraboloid. Let's see. Um, okay, it's not that church, but it's uh, but that's the shape also very important. Can you see this shape? Can you see this church that came up? Uh, let me show you. It's a parabola. So you need to research how the geometry of paraboloid works. But basically, you, what, why are we showing you this? You can get away with very, very thin uh, material. Um, uh, it's hyperbolic para paraboloids. Uh, curvy. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Kinds of hyperbolic paraboloids. Hyperbolic. Uh, and, and look at this. Look at this. So it's not just a funky design. Can you see this design? It's not just a funky design that I'm trying to show you because this, the world is filled with crazy designs all over. This is a strong design. This is what you can do with uh, five, 10 centimeters and having it so strong that you can build a whole public building. Um, uh, there's a reason why the shape is like that. So like um, a giant egg tray. say it again. It's like a giant egg tray almost. Yeah, and the way they you can experiment is by using some stretch fabric upside down with sand in this fabric that, you know, so th again, um, you know, it's how many of these you want to build or, or, or is it an expensive project? If it's just a home, but you just need to be aware that these things are possible. You can do anything you want. Uh, by the way, but then you're going to use a lot of material. If you don't use geometrical sense, um, like that video, Strength Through Geometry, like these shapes that we've been showing you now, you can do anything you want. You can you can build a, a home that stands like that on its side, and then you, you can have a home, you know what I mean? It just, but then you're using, like you've seen roofs that are like a meter thick of concrete was rebar you know we want to the, the, the reason that we're showing you these things is because you can get away with five ten centimeters worth of material or doing it out of bamboo or or you know you've seen how i use timber strats one inch board in that the siberian build that was really really cheap guys i built a whole home for eight hundred dollars entire home $800 on materials with triple glazed glass in Siberia, Canada, minus 50 Celsius. Um, and it worked. Obviously, you know, you can, we had drainage problems there. The In spring, the water came up. So um, French drain is very important, but that's a separate story. Anybody wants to add anything uh, at this point? Or ask any questions? Okay, so, yeah, so also um, in this design that you were doing, uh, when I showed it to my boss to teacher, he mentioned that uh, he would recommend that we have, we have, so it's good that we have that center room that's a rectangle, because in a rectangular room, as an office space or as a sleeping space, the brain like balances out and rests. Rooms that are trapezoid form, um, it's like each wall uh, sends a wave of energy. And what we want to do in Basta when we get it right, when by geometry, they when they like hit each other, the waves, they don't... Um, that don't cause a disharmony, if I can oversimplify it. And in a trapezoid shape, they're like, they fly all over. They're like, they don't cancel each other out. That, that That's what I, I got. Although I want to build trapezoid form. The reason that I really like it is because at 45 degree angle that, that we're busy doing in this design, uh, it comes from biogeometry. It's a very strong biogeometrical shape that just balances out the whole building. Anything that's behind the line, um, it just gets balanced out and harmonized. So I want to build it. I'm going to build those trapezoid rooms. And I can only speak from experience because, you know, at the same time, I don't see my boss to teach a living in a home that's built according to boss to he's renting a flat in the city. So we also got to be like, you know what I mean? We, we got to like read between the lines and follow our heart. Um, and I'm willing to experiment like a creed, Harry, even if the boss's teacher says, no, you'll go crazy in a room like that. Like, but, but one thing was true in a dome. I couldn't uh, sleeping, working, eating and using the dome as everything like one room dome and one other room for sleeping the one i did in south africa um i wasn't happy inside but i don't know if it was the dome or i was just 
in the crazy space. I was smoking pot every evening. You know, I was alone. I wasn't a divorce. Like, I can't say if it was the dome or it was me, <laughs> you know? So, but a rectangular room has its place. I just, it's crazy that I say that, but it's really, really, really true. Like, there's a reason why even in I'm renting now in a, in a rectangular hotel, you know, and I don't, I feel comfortable here. I really do feel comfortable here. So I think, um, like, you can play around with the room where you pray. Um, again, be careful with pyramids. Uh, uh, they need to be balanced out. Balanced out meaning, I, try, I can try and find you a picture now, Pyramid Hiops in Egypt. The sides are indented ever so slightly. Each of the four sides is indented. This giant freaking pyramid, it's indented. I, it, it's so crazy. Uh, pyramids, Hiops uh, from uh, helicopter. Just so you don't end up building a huge pyramid and um, and then the thing makes you sick. Um, images, pyramid hops. Um, so so maybe your your temple space you can play around and do something. Um, you know, like dome or pyramid or. A, Again, do your research because, a per, um, yeah, I think that's the closest. No, let me try and find it for you. But anyway, it's not even so important. Um, but the eye indented, I just can't find this picture. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Um, <clears throat> it's very important because it balances out that pyramid. Uh, because if you don't do that, it, it can get you really sick. Can you guys see this? It's not a good picture. There is another picture where it shows like an actual ever so slightly indent. But it's uh, we're not we're not gonna waste time on this. <clears throat> Uh, domes also have to be balanced. They need to have a little poop on them, a little, a little yamika. And half domes are very dangerous. Exact half domes are very dangerous. So you need to either have more than half a dome or you need to have a poop on top <clears throat> as it gets them uh, balanced out. Um, it's from biogeometry. Um, I don't want to overload you, but there is... Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, you know, <clears throat> I think you need to get, we'll get into it when we do a vast lesson and by geometry lesson, because it's not for now. Let me, before we go too much further, if anyone has got any questions, please ask them. Otherwise, I want to show you the next uh, bit of course, so just to brief you on it. Anyone's got any questions? We can throw any question, anything. Okay, so let me, you should see the screen. So drawing with pencil. So if anyone, so anyone new, basically we have the drawing course, the whole program in the course is uh, written out in theory and design and inspiration. There's five lessons. And there is the first lesson, how our drawing course will roll. There it is how a drawing course will roll. So week two, okay? Assistance was exercised from previous week, okay? And briefing out lesson seven, learning to draw the front view, and lesson nine, drawing the elevation slice east to west. And lesson 10, elevation through the vault. Yeah. Okay, so we really accelerate here, and even lesson 11. Da, da, da. Lesson eight will be done together in a live session late in the course. Lesson six is recorded to su a live support session. Okay, let's look into it. <clears throat> okay, so we've drawn the top view and the slice through the center. That was last week. This week, seven, eight. Okay, so drawing the front view. Let's just look at each one. So basically, we're going to look, yeah, 
there is a front view. It's one. It's just a lesson on that. Um, what are we pulling? I think we're pulling from the top view. Yeah. My internet is a little slow. Look, the whole lesson is here, but we're basically going to be taking off markers from the top view, which give us, you know, which give us the new front view now. So the same dome, mine is also not very accurate, but we're taking, you know, we're redrawing it anyway. I mean, it's as accurate as I could do it. Um, yeah, basically it's all here. I'm not going to re, re, re look at this lesson entirely. You, you look at it. If you've got any questions, just shout. But basically, yeah, we use the top view to redraw our um, front view and we take a particular line. And I show you which line. I think where it's lying now there. <clears throat> okay, so that's the front view. <clears throat> Um, color pencils and tracing paper. You remember I showed you all those, um, how I did all those uh, colorful things with tracing paper and, and, and coloring in pencils? It's just a quick lesson on that, just how I do shading. And I'm not a, I didn't do any art classes or anything. It's just something I figured out myself. Um, and, I, and I show you, um, I show you some basics on that. So, but also don't fuss about it, you know, you know, rather do the practical of drawing these, you know, slices front view and all of that. And then you can always come back to the color pencils and, and, and tracing paper, but I'll, <clears throat> I'll show you anyway. So yeah, it's basically that stuff, you know, if you want to color in and, and, and get, you know, and I also show you what I did was this tracing paper <clears throat> in Photoshop. Um, yeah, the, that that food grower. You see, the food grower was obviously done in, in black and white pencil, and then uh, and then it was tracing paper. I beefed it up, and I got the outer layer, I got the inner layer, and that's I ran it through a Photoshop filter. So obviously, you don't get that effect with pencils, but it's all drawn with pencils and pens. And that method of pencils and pens, I show in this quick lesson. Uh, so I'm not going to go into it now, but um, you can play around. Uh, oh yeah, there's Acrete Harry showing something here with his <laughs> uh, with his dome. Uh, so he was on this course with us. Um, anyway, so when you when you have some extra time, you can you can get into it. Um, but most importantly is um, all the other stuff. Okay, my internet, sorry guys, my internet is very slow. Anyone's got any questions whilst it's loading up? Yeah, Lush, I'll ask you another question. So, obviously we're going to have some sort of uh, licensed version or practice version of um, Rhino during this. How long will we have access to Rhino? Because obviously I want to draw my own buildings here. And I, I you, you'll have three months, legally three months on your Rhino that you download from them. Mm -hmm. I approached them and I asked them to provide me with, allow me to sell students licenses. So you guys can have a Rhino for like $200. And because I'm not a registered university, they didn't allow me that. So I just give out a hacked version. I really tried. I'm sorry. I purchased my own version. Harry purchased his own version. We use it professionally, but I don't think anything bad that you draw what your is, own. How much is the uh, professional version? It's close to a thousand bucks. From what and I, you were saying Vault doesn't work on Mac? Uh, which Vault? Yeah. 
the Rhino, there's a plugin for Rhino. Oh, that- Rhino Vault. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't sat with Rhino Vault plugin. May, may, uh, I haven't figured it out. So from what I remember last time, it was only for PC, but that like things change so fast. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not in the right way to comment. Fair <clears throat> enough. It's like when I'm going to get to actually start going into it really, really seriously and uh, the time is coming soon because we want to build whole communities that are built around a kid's uh, kids play space, kids classrooms, kids new type of schooling and a co-working space for adults because you can't just have homes with nothing, you know, you got to have that infrastructure, something for the children uh, and some way for adults to express themselves, to generate income. Like in Arco Scienti, they make bells, brass bells, and the whole city is built with just selling those bells, you know. Um, so I want to get, build communities like that. And housing is obviously very important I'm going to be doing it here in Russia because land is relatively cheap and there's a lot of freedom on building codes. Uh, in fact, there are no building codes. You can build what you want, which is very cool. And I'm going to be inviting you guys to come and, you know, invest and purchase land and get citizenship and bring your families, bring your children and just <clears throat> relocate over. But um, that's a separate conversation. And I really always want to do it with a spiritual se- uh, touch, not just touch, <laughs> spiritual drive as the main, um, but it's a separate conversation. We'll do it separately. Um, okay, so elevation east to west, uh, 2D elevation slice east to west. <clears throat> and we're going to do, yeah, it looks like... Um, we're going to do quite a bit this week. Uh, elevation slice, so that's that's the final result. So we're going to take a slice through the home, um, also using your top view once again. And uh, here, the, the top view is kind of pr- pr- prominent. Uh, pr- you know, it runs through the whole theme. So your top view, really spend time and get it finished because your front view is offered, any slices we do are offered east, west, north, south. Um, Yeah, you see, I'm taking the, you know, I'm pushing it directly over. It's like a front view, but it's just a slice somewhere in the middle of the home, if that makes sense. It's a very important uh, work because as I said to you last week in Brazil, I didn't do that. I kind of just had a very pretty drawing and I flew over to build in a workshop and I realized that my sandbag dome was higher than the acrete dome that was going to be sandbag dome was going to lean onto acrete and acrete is like a sponge soft. You can't have sandbag leaning onto acrete. Um, so these slices you do through the home help you visualize what your home is going to look like, the height of the roof at that point, the details it's all about details you you, you're detailing it out and elevation through the vault um you remember we did a a slice through the middle that you guys that martha was just showing us this is another slice somewhere north south but somewhere to the side through one of these trapezoid vaults here And by the way, the, the reason that there is a, such an angle in the roof, I explained it in the course, because in winter in St. Petersburg, the sun only comes out in February and the angle of the sun is 22 degrees. And that's why the, according, according to Earthship design, um, that roof needs to allow the sunlight to come in all the way to the back of the room. Do you understand? And for the sunlight to come in all the way to the back of the room, I need to have the roof uh, tilted upwards to that angle of the sun, if that makes sense. 
obviously this is not going to be the case in Bali and and that's why if you have your designs for Bali and Costa Rica or some ideas bring them through because we can look at them and I can give you some ideas based on your design and we can tweak them because obviously we're drawing something for like northern canada north uh, northern st petersburg northern russia um so it doesn't need to apply but at the same time the skills that i teach you you'll be able to draw anything you want in rhino after you've gone through this course but the design itself like a paper drawing paper sketch if you have some ideas please bring them forth we can have a look at them break them down i can give you some suggestions we can you know pick up on some ideas together. Maybe somebody else can also give you some in input. So don't be shy. Use this time to even bring your design forth. So that's the lessons we have to go through. Um, yeah. Uh, see how you go. Um, we can use next week to wrap up all the, um, all the paperwork. Um, and then we're going to start downloading Rhino already next week. Not, not this week, the following week. So <clears throat> let's, let, let's just uh, see finally what's, uh, what's. Uh... I just ask a quick question there, Lasha. Yeah. See there in that, um, when well, you're sharing the screen there with that um, slope roof there. Mm -hmm. um, what is the purpose of the slope roof? I mean, what's wrong with just the usual you know, uh, ceiling that's horizontal and parallel to the ground. Um, you know, it it starts at the at the highest point where the dome okay. meets and just goes straight across. So look, um, I was going according to the Earthship design. Earthship mm -hmm. design states that the sunlight needs to come in all the way to the back of the. Let me let me show yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, I get that bit. Yeah. So if I do that parallel correct mm -hmm. okay and my angle of the sun when it comes out um is 22 degrees okay and then what happens is it'll just reach let's say half of the um i should design it'll reach halfway and it won't reach the back of the wall yeah get that i'm just wondering like if if you you know if you got it at its highest point is there a reason why it's got to slope down like that instead of just going from the highest point and just carrying on at the highest point all the way through? Okay, okay, hold on. Let me, I'll, I'll get to your, look at this design. Can you see it? Hold on. Yeah. Okay, you see he's got a shallow angle. Yeah. The reason for his shallow angle is because it's designed for Taos in, in Taos, New Mexico. Taos, New Mexico, mm -hmm. Uh, sun is like 300 days a year okay so at he designed the angle of these uh windows okay you see this angle of this window yeah okay the the, the greenhouse he designed it so at 21st of december when this was winter solstice yeah mm-hmm uh huh. Winter solstice. So the 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 sun comes in at ninety degrees to that uh, window, allowing it to penetrate all the way through. Correct. Yep. And then the reason that he designed it that the slight angle is because um, um, I think his Agreed. angle is like eight degrees or nine degrees or eleven degrees in in that twenty first of December and. It allows the sunlight to come in or all the way. You see, Earth ships they tap into to get the maximum um, to get maximum results benefits from laws of physics. Uh, um, down to the point, I'm trying to look for a picture for you where they even paint half of the wall in a strip in a dark color, and the rest is in a light color at an angle. Do you, do, do you understand? Okay, so, yeah, so, so that sunlight in winter can really warm that home up. Um, I'm trying to look for that picture for you. So I was going kind of like, not going to lie, I'm, I was going blindly behind Earthship, but also trying to do my own thing with um, 
um, inside the bottle. Uh, but at the same time, trying to do my own design because I don't I don't want to just copy somebody else's, you know, design. But now sure. I'm, I really want to go completely my, my own way, but take some things from the Earthship, like thermal mass, uh, but also combine it with Vast too. And uh, I can't find that picture now where there's half the wall is painted darker, half the wall painted lighter. But but um, you know. You'll just have to trust me on it. So they, so what they did is they, they really want to, inside the home, outside is minus 10 Celsius, and inside the home is plus 22 degrees, and there is no heating at all. That's what they were able to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I think uh, when I was looking at that picture earlier on, it answered my question. It was more to do with perhaps rainwater capture and structural integrity. Of the yeah, door. first of all, flat roofs are, look, the vault itself already lets the water run off. So if we're just going to do the vault and it's all flat, and I might just do that because we must also realize that so much sunlight in the room, imagine having a room that you can't hide from the sun. You have a huge window arch at the front. You have, a you have a slanted <laughs> roof that allows all that sunlight to come through all the way the back to the back of the room. And you're like baking in the sun and it's all facing south, which is aggressive sun. If I can say it's Mars. If we're talking about Mars, it's like Mars is there, okay? <laughs> the, the, the sunlight on the east, that morning sunlight is much more gentle, much more beautiful, much more sacred. We we'll wake up with it. We we'll do yoga with it. Now you've got the south sunlight with this huge window. Basically, the home we're drawing right now in 3D, okay? In 2D and then 3D. And then the sunlight comes in all the way to the back. You can't hide from it except just covering the whole thing with curtains. I just don't think it's healthy. So, yeah, I've experienced that before. Not great. <laughs> exactly, especially the sun. The you know the the east sunlight. Oh, welcome! It's beautiful. You want all of it in. You know, it's so gentle. Do your yoga. Do your meditation. You know, have have a cup of tea, coffee with it, breakfast. Fantastic. But but trying to work with this giant window and all that sunlight, Mars aggressive south. <laughs> it's it's, I don't think it's healthy. So so use this design because I already designed this course with all the lessons nice edited for you. I don't want to redo it. So that we're doing a, a home that could be cool as a sauna, as a, as a sports center, for example, because, you know, that south energy is very much high, high energy, like uh, exercise training, maybe a sauna with... Mm, tropical plants, you know, where people come in and go out. But as a home to live in 24-7, um, uh, I am avoiding, the, uh, I'm abandoning that idea. But as a course, I'm giving it to you because it's, it's the, the, the training is there. But I'm telling you that it, I wouldn't do that now. And that's why I, I, I'm glad I went to that master training. And as you'll be drawing this thing during the next uh, three months, I'll be drawing the vast to home, which I'll be sharing with you bit by bit as I go. And um, you'll get an idea of what I think a perfect home would, would be. But again, it's a phase one. Phase two would be that 3D printed piece. But I can't present it to the people because it's not a DIY home uh, 3D printed uh, yet. It, we're a bit further. It needs to have the Rhino vault and figuring out and forming a team. And not everybody will be able to print those pieces. Although that's where we're going. Because eventually where I want to go in phase two is have a home that's... Let me show you like where I was going with it. So you can see um, it's, it, it, it's a very basic design. I spent an hour on it. And um, it's also old. It's outdated. But you can at least see uh, how, uh, yeah. So if you remember that home that I was showing you that the guys took six years to build the hyperbolic paraboloid. And if you combine it with that bridge that I was showing you, uh, and then and then this is the design that I was coming off that. Again, it's a very quick sketch. It will take you an hour to draw that in Rhino. 
obviously first layer of glazing, uh, second layer of glazing would be the geodesic dome, for example, half dome, which I didn't even draw it as a geodesic, I just drew it as a bubble because of a quick sketch. And then a third layer, again, it's Canada, it's north, north, minus 50 Celsius, minus 50 Fahrenheit, not for Bali. <laughs> But be that as it may, this is the design for the roof I was going. And that's the future. That's where I'm going. But I'm not going to do it all south, obviously, after all everything we spoke of. That's where I'm going with it. But that will be more phase two. Phase one will be, will be a series of vaults. Um, hold on. I'll show it to you again. Phase one, meaning that people can take this design because a whole bunch of people pre-purchased my design uh, for Watelarium, and Watelarium is really changing up the bathroom. Um, I mean, no, it's not here. The eight, the eight pointed is not here. This is what before the workshop. This is where I was going. I was going towards again this type of home with, uh, yeah. You see, there is a sunlight that it can come in in the winter. It can come in at an angle all the way. This is where I was going, but I'm changing that. I'll show you the eight pointed uh, drawings uh, at a later stage once I've got it a bit better drawn. This is one of the previous designs, top view. See how we can use by geometry. We can have our flooring heating that's installed in a certain shape according to the heart or according to certain uh, organs of our body, and that room can become the healing space. That's where I'm going. That's where I want to use the by geometry. Uh, what I mean by um, you remember I showed you in the presentation on those four south of me on those four. Yeah, I'll show it to you again. It's a series of channels uh, that heat up the, the floor underneath. Um, and they can be in the shape of um, by geometry. And Let me, I'll explain what I mean. Okay, I don't, I don't have that other picture, but this is... Was that the Korean Korean heating? Yeah, on the floor, yeah. South Korean heating. I showed yeah. it to you last time. Um, th this is... Yeah, so that's what I was starting to do. Now, this doesn't have to be just a snake. It can be a, a form of a shape. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. If you all Google, uh, uh, I'll Google also with you, um, by geometry biosignatures okay <clears throat> he has a book ibrahim karim and i haven't bought it yet but it's um biosignatures okay so you'll understand what i mean by this on doll floor so all our organs have um specific energetical flows can you see these can you see them the little ones? Michael? Yep. Okay, so look, like, uh, for example, these are ovaries. So what he, what he would do, he would allow, uh, he would let people, he'd bend them out of um, copper wire, and he'd allow people to have them in their pockets. And then, um, basically, if you have an ailment, if somebody has an ailment with their heart, like there, there, there is a heart one, um, okay. Uh, if he, if he, if one has an ailment, the heart starts to regenerate back to its original form. Look at that. Can can you see this lung? Yeah, intestines. Can you see this? So how he got to these shapes he would look at the heart and dissection um and then he'd look how the arteries are and uh, he'd draw them up accordingly heart balance blood pressure uh you know 
And then, so people who would have blood pressure would wear this shape and then the heart would go back to its original healthy form within about three months. So I want to use that type of forms to create the on doll channels underneath the floor for heating. Or we can have that as little artworks placed on our flooring as well. Um, it's a bit far out, but um, Ibrahim Karim has proven over 50 years of work that this stuff works. But at the same time, we need to understand that if people are getting heart problems, there is obviously something on a metaphysical level that they need to look at as well. So, but like Heinz was saying, you know, until we understand the metaphysical level, we can at least have a home that starts healing us. And that's what we're trying to, to, to get to. But I believe, like Heinz said, that um, it, once we get to that, we work with our inner dialogue with Christ consciousness, we can... We can live absolutely anywhere and be as healthy and live past 100 years. And, and, and I believe that happiness is the key. Whatever you do, it's either making you joyful or you're actually dying from it. <laughs> if it's making you joyful, your cells expand. You can regenerate all your cells. Even if you're living in a place that's not aligned or not chi you know but if you resonating love and you're resonating good good energy not always we are not one-sided polarity magnets we we have both sides sometimes i really am down uh like today before this call i was praying for an hour because i was just not in a good space i just bought a liter of honey and i hit it with my elbow by mistake and a whole jar broke you know what I mean? The things like that are happening, you know? So I'm not saying like saint or always bliss. Uh, that's not what we're talking about. But we're generally striving towards this good resonance. Like generally speaking, I've my thoughts, my negative thoughts, not generally speaking, 100% speaking. In the last four months ago, my negative thoughts of self-hate have stopped for the first time in like 30 years. So this work that I'm talking about, the spiritual work that Heinz was mentioning, I, it really is working for me. Fear of money is gone. Fear of loneliness is gone. And self-hating thoughts are gone. But I divorce and I'm traveling and I'm doing what I want uh, completely. And I'm just living according to joy. Um, so if things are not making me joyful, I'll stop doing them. If I meet with somebody and halfway through a conversation, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm like, my energy is imploding and I'm starting to feel worse and worse and worse. I get up and I leave that meeting. Like, even if it's not polite, I don't give a shit about politeness anymore. So, but that's a separate uh, talk, but it's, it's important. It is important because um, everything I built, as I said, I lost because I wasn't in a good space. So, you know, when you get to the land and homesteading and all our dreams of living on the land, maybe it's just not even your dream. <laughs> I thought it was my dream, but I realized that a hectare of land is too big. I took that idea from Anastasia, Kindermains, but it's it's an idea. It's a concept I took from somebody else. I tried to have seven hectares. I thought the bigger, the better. I couldn't maintain that land that overgrown with weeds a fire hazard, uh, wattle. We have wattle in South Africa, maybe Australia also. It just overgrown the whole land with wattle. I, I couldn't pull it out, thousands of trees. And the more, I pull one out, two come out. I pull two out, four come out. It was like a battle. So maybe we don't need so much land. So what I'm trying to say is your inner dialogue of what you really, 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 really want should come from your heart and don't listen to anybody else, not even me. I'm just giving you some ideas and uh, that will possibly break all your dogmas and concepts. But uh, yeah, just do what you love. That's If there's one thing you remember from this whole conversation, just do what you love. Do what you love and you can't do anything else. How can you do anything else? <laughs> You know what I mean? Because if you're doing what you don't love, 
you're going to start buying uh, things on credit to to bump yourself up because when you do things you hate you you implode you, you like you, you start folding you start feeling worse so you th- buy things to make yourself feel better those things make you go on credit credit that never can be paid off uh, gets you more down you carry on doing things that you hate more to to pay off that credit you get more into debt because the 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 um, the law of compensation states <laughs> it's a law <laughs> that if you do something you hate you'll compensate with things with uh, going and on a cruise ship that you can't afford or whatever so but if you do what you love you it's like it's just money will come if you do what you love and you do it with god and you do according to your talents according to your divine destiny which you can you do remember if you don't remember get on your knees and say god what is my destiny i want to know right now and start you know the ones that knock will eventually open for them you know that 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 really rings true i kept on knocking knocking to the point where i put a rope on my neck i was so depressed eventually i I went on my knees and said god i need help i was without god for 42 and a half years i thought i could do it alone and i couldn't do it alone i got just couldn't do it alone second divorce a son that says he wants to slaughter me with a knife in the past uh, financial bankruptcy toppled that I'm left with nothing at 43 years of age uh, was, yeah? I'm, I don't want to code with my word new reality. That's why I keep on saying it in the past, yeah? Um, because the current reality is different to that. Uh, and then, you know, you look at all these affirmations, the more affirmations I said, the more depressed I got, the affirmations weren't working anymore. Nothing was working because... Um, because if you can't say affirmation, but you've got this burning inside your, your heart, you're doing what you don't love, and you're affirming Louise Hay type of bullshit talk, this is going to be better. That is going to be better, but it's just not getting better. And you're drowning and drowning and drowning. And you're looking at all these happy people. You think that they, you need to be like them, but it's not working for you because you're unique. You have your unique path, your unique talents, your unique uh, food diet. You can't listen to anybody. Somebody, I ate meat the other day. It was fantastic. It was lamb. I had meat. Then I had it the second day. I had the worst day. Uh, one of the worst days. It just worked so bad. And they charged me quadruple for it. You know? So it's not like you have to follow. You eat meat or you don't eat meat. Sometimes you eat meat when it's winter time. You need meat. It's minus 50 Celsius outside. You have to have meat. You can't be a vegan. You'll die here. But maybe you won't. Maybe it will work for you. Again, don't listen to me. Listen to your body. But uh, generally speaking, like Canada, Russia, like might be more difficult for you to be. Or or like in summer, I eat salads all the time. I don't want to have meat. And then in wintertime, I eat soups. You know, because soup is supporting me because it's warm. It's just energetically good, you know. So it's not like one cut for clean for all you don't li- you just listen to your own body please there's one lesson and do what you love and live according to happiness but remember that we're not always blissful our emotion our states of feelings go up and down but the trick is to get what what like if you're in a down state ask god what do i need to find out what do i need to realize about this down state and then you get an answer you go into a little meditation 10 seconds, two minutes, you get the answer like that immediately. Just ask. And then you'll like get, oh, you need to realize this, that, and the other. You realize this, that, and the other, boom, you switch and you're like, oh, and that blue starts coming from your heart again. So you needed to go into that down to create a wish. A wish is the antimatter, quantum physics. The wish is the antimatter that creates the material matter. So the, the, the downward state, that negative lowered state is perfect because it created a charge it created a wish that took you out of it that got you to that next stage but in that past reality i said no 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 i don't want to feel bad i don't want to feel bad it's terrible it's negative no no i just want to feel good the more you run away from it the more it catches you the more depressed you'll get go into that negative feeling and find out what do i need to realize why am i feeling this negative feeling and it might be and it'll be a unique answer for you don't go to the job today. No, but I must. I must feed my children. Don't go to the job today. 
your mind says, no, 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 go to the job. But your heart tells you, don't go to the job. You don't go to the job. You take a day off. You go to the mountains. You have the best day of your life. This this evening uh, on your Bitcoin account, half a Bitcoin draws up like that. It's a, it's a possibility. It just happened to me last week. I had $350 just drop in my Bitcoin account because of the stuff I'm telling you. And it's not magic. <laughs> So I'm sorry to go into a bit of a tantrum, but it's very important what I'm speaking about. It really is. Any questions? A anyone else is having experiences like that? Spiritual experiences possibly? Yeah. 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 I mean, okay. Definitely. Definitely. Anyone wants to share yeah. their story a little bit? I just put one in the comments and said, that's been pretty much my experience the last several years. <laughs> but every time I, you know, try to keep going along with something I don't want to, it just kind of, uh, it, it kind of just slowly drains you out. And then when you just say, F it, I'm not, I don't care anymore. It's good. I'm just going to do this now. I'm going to start playing music again. Like I did last night. I felt, felt great. I finally play, I'm playing in front of people because I've been kind of doing it on my own. Yeah, I felt felt good. I felt like it's like whatever your authentic person is, if you do more of that or get better at that, that's when you it's just it, it's something you can't like quantify either. It's just something you just it's a feeling. It's just there. And uh so that and just doing the project in West Virginia and getting into things like this more and just you know, spending more time doing this, you know, and then, yeah. And then whenever there's something, I just don't, cause I guess like you, you get into these situations where you feel obliged, you have to go to do this function or that or a family thing. And there's some, sometimes I'm just like, nah, I don't feel like going. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. And then, you know, it might seem rude, but you know, it's just one of those, yeah, it's one of those things. So yeah, basically everything you just, kind of said there i'm just like yeah <laughs> so, that's pretty much it so well, well brett I'm, i'd, I'd like, like to tell you that i fell out completely now of all obliges and rudeness and what it's meant to be i just do everything according to what i love entirely my entire day is filled by doing what i love nothing i've stopped i've stopped uh, my divorce was the end of it Divorce, nice. depression, negative negative thoughts stopped. <laughs> My negative stop thoughts stopped after 30 years of hammering me. Um, and I couldn't stop them before. I tried this, I tried psychology. Thanks God I didn't try antidepressants because that would just turn my brain <laughs> into uh <Yeah. laughs> whatever, you know. So I didn't I didn't yeah. go that. Um, but they really they did stop. <laughs> that's that's what I can I can vouch for that. I can say that. Um. Yeah. Nice. Yep, so here, here. <laughs> it, it's a transition, but I made it a hardcore transition. Like I don't care. I flattened my bank account to zero about eight times this summer. Um, I, I broke through that fear of mon monelessness. I broke through that bottom hole. I couldn't break it through. I, I was sitting with nothing in my account, and I. This guy that I'm not following, he's not a teacher, but he inspired me on this Christ consciousness, Radamir, which means um, happy for life, <laughs> Radomir. Um, and he says that first good state, and then reality starts folding accordingly. And um, I'm, I think I mentioned it to you last week, the story, but I was sitting there with like, after the divorce, all alone and 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 then the bank account went to zero like almost zero and i'm meant to be traveling south i don't want to be sitting in this abandoned village i have a home in an abandoned village but i don't want it but it's my home anyway it's three thousand dollars for a home and two hectares of land that's the prices of land in russia with a home and it's got an oven in it that you can overwinter and your forest all around you and your vegetables and it's all three thousand dollars for two hectares and a home but i don't want it <laughs> and, I, and i was traveling south and i'm like and i don't i have what a hundred not even a hundred i have ten dollars in my account and radamir says first 
a good state, and then the reality starts to fold accordingly. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. I not agree, but I and not accept, because accept is kind of like, okay, that's my life, that's the way it is, and that's the way it's going to be. I came into maybe agreement, agreement, that that is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to travel south. I have a home, and all I have with me is a prayer, no internet connection, cold water, and walking in this beautiful forest uh, land uh, around, yeah, and all over, because you can walk all over in Russia. It's not... Even if it's private property, you can still walk there. Nobody, trespassers will not be shot. There's no such thing in Russia, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> so I have walking, I have cold water, and I have uh, a prayer. And I started doing all three. Um, and next day, I had a donation of $1,000. Nice. Until that point, I had no proof at all that this works. I had yeah. a proof that I came to a dead end by doing things I don't love out of agreements and must-haves, should-haves and all that BS. And I came to a dead end with depression, second divorce, a son that hated me and bankruptcy. So that didn't work. But the proof that first a good feeling and then everything else, I didn't have a proof that that will work financially for me. Sure, good feeling, anybody can feel good, but... Waste cash. Right. <laughs> Why <Right>. tomorrow? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a, I mean, there's also like synchronicity seem to pop up when you start going in the path that you want to go. What there. pops up? What pops up? Sy uh, synchronicity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like Carl, I guess Carl Jung, I think. I think he coined. Maybe somebody else did. Doesn't matter. But, uh, the synchronicity. Yeah, it does, doesn't matter. But yeah, that's one thing I definitely believe in because uh, uh it's it's almost kind of freaks me out sometimes i'm like uh, you know like when i when i start moving you know when i'm doing what i want to do and, and on on the path and it just man it's just yeah so that's that's the other thing i've come around to uh believe in so yeah it's the most important thing that you can take out of this course is do what you love if you can't cut it sharply like me, because obviously you'll say, Alosha, you don't have any, like you, your child is in South Africa. You're not paying anything for him. Your ex-wife, you've given them everything. You don't have to, you don't have a wife. You don't have to carry her that burden. I'm not saying like, but maybe for some of you, you might need to do the drastic change because if you're getting drowning and you've got negative thoughts and you're borderline about to take antidepressants or put a rope on your neck, either this or either yeah. that, maybe something radical might need to like, you just tell your wife or your husband, like, fuck, this is not working. I need a three months time out. Uh, if you're still going to be here, you're here. Otherwise, I, I need three months time out. I need to go figure my life out right now. I'm not going to go and shag anybody else. Uh, again, don't promise. <laughs> you just need three months time out. You just need three months for yourself. For me, it wasn't about having sex with anybody else. I, I met a whole bunch of ladies from sites uh, from, and I didn't sleep with anybody. I just, and thankfully, because there was no, none of that new bonds that you, that you need to now, uh, you know, because I don't need a third marriage that's going to like, you know, going to divorce i don't need that so i've been just figuring myself out without being attached to any woman and it's been great because i really have figured a lot of things out i know what i want i want to speak about love before i thought i'm by architect i just need to do by architecture by architecture earthship 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 and i'm realizing hey we're actually having a lot more value possibly now talking about these things because nobody else is bringing them up Louise Hayes going on her path. No affirmations, affirmations, affirmations. But that got me to depression. I nearly murdered myself going the path of Louise Hay. I nearly murdered myself going the path of uh, Tony Robinson. Positive thinking, positive thinking. Uh, Tony. <laughs> it didn't <laughs> work. It did not work. I'm, you know, right. I really, we all tried it. Because Tony Robinson, yeah. we all tap into the limited 120-year resource that we have. 
And when we tap all of that energy out, some of the smarter ones start tapping from your future children. You start tapping that energy resource. So, uh, and then the future children gets born down or what are they like mentally, or, or you can't even get pregnant, for example. Okay. Because you've tapped all the energy of five future generations out using Tony Robertson's thinking. The strategy that I'm not the strategy, the way of living that I'm presenting to you is every five, 10 minutes, you ask what you're feeling. What am I feeling? Not hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Not that shit. But what am I feeling? Really, really, what am I feeling? Like, I'm feeling sadness. Okay, you know, you go into that sadness. What is the sadness? It doesn't even matter what the sadness is about. I mean, you can pinpoint it's him or her, but ultimately you're just feeling sadness. Okay, feel it. Because behind that sadness will come that good feeling or calm feeling. But if we avoid sadness, we will not experience a calm feeling. Your soul is an organ in your body that is responsible for feeling. When we feel terrible and we say, I don't want to feel that, I don't want to feel that. With our words, we trade our soul. Call it to the demons, the beast, the Satan, it doesn't matter. But you give your soul away with our words, you Push it away because I don't want to feel that bad feeling because you don't, you know, you don't realize that that bad feeling could be a compound thing worth of doing uh, 10, 20 years of doing something you hate because you need to look after your family or look after this or look after that because you promised all the promises we make, all this shit. So that feeling that uh, that depression depressive feeling that suddenly builds up into something that you're ready to take antidepressants or put a rope over your neck is due to 10 years worth of doing something you hate uh, you need to look into the root and that's why that inner dialogue is so important with christ you say jesus christ and i'll talk about jesus christ definitely it's an operating system it's not a religious thing it's not uh you know but I, i'm i'm two hours in prayer every day Two hours in prayer every day. And I feel great. M miracles are starting to happen. Uh, it's a whole new way of life, but it's a big conversation. I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't know what how you're feeling about this conversation now, but it's really it's changed my life completely. I have no more depression. I have no more money problems. Money is appearing on my bank account. Uh, miraculously, uh, like well, Jesse just signed up. Where's Jesse? There, Jesse came up, you know, $444. Boom. That'll be another two weeks of living plenty. Lots of food, avocado, eat what I want, sleep in any hotel I want. That's just one Jesse. And and then you say, but I need a million dollars. What? I, I looked, I answer, tried to answer yes. So what am I going to do with a million dollars? Like right now, do I need a million dollars? I'm sitting in a stunning hotel, you know, um, I'm you know, I'm living, having all the food I need. What do I need a million dollars for? And plus you have another thing called um, counter counter wishes because my dad on a million dollars gone sideways with alcohol and other, and, so, and uh, so I, you also need to work with your counter wishes because I have a fear which I'm working with that if I have a million dollars, I'm going to buy cocaine and I'm going to go sideways. It could be that I'm not saying for me because I'm, you know, I've tried cocaine. I don't want to go there, but one could have that, that counter, um, counter wish that, uh, if you have so much money, you're going to go sideways because your family, do you know what I'm saying? Maybe your family member has had a lot of money and they gone the wrong way down. Or like um, in 90s in, in Russia, they were shooting all the millionaires off. Mafia was shooting them dead. Dead, 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 dead. We'd walk downstairs and there's brains lying on the asphalt. And somebody was, there was a shooting out in the middle of the night. So there's a fear of if I have a lot of money, for example, then I'll be, you know, I'm just saying, so the, we need to work with those things as well. Uh, but that's a separate conversation. So counter, balance, counter wishes. So you have a wish to be wealthy, but you have a counter wish that if I get wealthy, I'll either be dead or I'm going to, like my dad, gone sideways on alcohol, that kind of thing. But that's a separate conversation. Um, 
I don't want to overload you too much on it. Uh, we, we, we will do these talks on Sunday, but it's good that we touched on it anyway, um, because uh, I want you to be happy. <laughs> and happiness is not uh, Tony Robinson's and Louis Hay path. It didn't work for me. Maybe it's work. This is what I want to end this with. If your belief is making you happy, then go for it. You, you, you're on the right path. Everything works. It's amazing. Go for it. Okay. Um, but if your belief does not make you happy, my question to you is, why do you believe in it? In this belief? Because your belief is not right. Your uh, uh, the belief can be any belief. Do you, do you understand this phrase? We can believe anything we want, and any belief we choose will work for us. That's why it's very it's going to be very difficult for me to to try and show you anything otherwise, because what you believe in comes in facts that show you uh, in in you prove your life in your life. Uh, Jesse, do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely, my friend. I hear I hear you loud and clear. I, I couldn't agree more. So what you believe in will show to you in facts in your life that that's exactly you think that, uh, like, for example, oh, another thing I don't believe in and all our entire group of these Radamir people, we don't believe in objective reality anymore. Because you can look it up in 2022 they gave a nobel prize to a quantum a quantum physicist i don't remember who um but he proved that in your reality will happen with more more chance of happening it's still a very 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 variable yeah but in your i don't know exactly phrase in english but in your reality with the highest percentage of it happening true will happen what you be with what you put everything on in the western world is generally money in the russian world is generally life because money in russia is not of highest value people put their lives on stuff because of all the wars with we and whatever so it doesn't matter the the, the key qu the key point is what you put on most valuable on what belief you put your most valuable um thing on that belief will have the highest percentage of it happening as, as truth as reality. That's what's proven on a quantum physics. A Nobel Prize was given to that. And that changed everything. That means there is no more objective reality. So the objective reality that, for example, uh, uh, Trump is this and Biden is that and all, all of it, all of it, just stop. Stop watching any of it. It, it. None of it is true. But that's a separate conversation. But choose the belief can be anything. So choose the right belief. And why I chose the Christ, uh, they somewhere up in the stars, they took Jesus Christ as a point of agreement. That's what happened to me in my home. I agreed that that is my reality was that low bank account and all that story that I couldn't travel south. They chose Jesus Christ as a point of agreement because he's in the Islam religion. He is in, he's, he's in like many religions. Yeah. And, and they made him as this operating system that we can plug into ourselves that a man, a God, man, a God came to earth as a man. So a man can become God. So they chose Jesus Christ not as a religious figure, but as a point of agreement, because he's already in many, many religions, like two billion people already feed him with their energy. And um, they took away this entity and they created him as an operating system that we can plug into. It. You see, in your belief, it's good to believe that there is God, <laughs> because when you're in like a dark situation, if you don't believe there is, if you if there is no God, if there's nobody that can pull you out and help you, the dark reality is much, much darker. Do you understand? But if you're in a dark situation and you believe in the superpower that can pull you out and really like 
what's that <laughs> that can really pull yourself out of it but the crisis is in you it's not an external entity so it's not this guy that we're praying to up on the sky it's he's sitting right here in your heart chakra if if i can yeah i'll be talking more about it um on sundays and we'll be bringing in other people who have been in this whole uh, um movement for years uh, maybe even radamir himself will, will and i'll translate him and uh, yeah and i'll be sharing more on that anyway not to overload you but these are very important things because they'll change your life they changed my life um yeah any questions or we just wrap this up uh Elisha, i just want to ask a question about the, the drawing the top view yeah I didn't uh, do the side view yet. I, I just haven't had time, um, mm -hmm. work full time at the, at the minute. Um, but you know how when you, you, you decided to change the position of the um, sauna to bring it back a bit? Mm -hmm. um, I haven't I haven't made that change. It doesn't matter, though, does it? No, no. No, 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 no. Really, don't worry. Any mistakes you make on that. The most important thing is that you can see that what you want to the exercise I'm trying to show you, I learned it in the ge geography class. When they gave us contour lines, you know the contour lines of the maps, of the mountain from the top view, and then they made us draw from that contour line a side view of that hill. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know that exercise? Yeah. This is basically, if I just rudimentary, like break it down, this is what I want you guys to get. How, right. how, to, how to draw from the top view um, and, and visualize your home at various points. Um, obviously, the architects uh, take it way, way further. Um, and and But um, I want you to be able to visualize your home. So, for example, um, you're not standing in the home that now you're hitting your own head through a door opening. Yeah? Because... If you start detailing out, let's say you make a door opening 1.8 meters and you're like, that's the form work I'm going to use to put in my sandbags. You know what I'm talking about? And um, and when I remove it, it'll be 1.8 meters because I'm 175. But if you don't detail that out, you don't, you, 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 the details will allow you to realize that, oh, hang on, but I'm still having have a door frame and the door frame is seven centimeters. Um, and then so I need to allow for, for spacing. And then it's like, oh, and then you end up hitting your, your head all the time. Or you need to make a, uh, like, lower your floor so you don't hit your head. Like, this is what we're actually trying to do. That, that you're able to to have a home that, that, that um, or for example, like, that's why I asked Martha, did she draw herself uh, to scale? Um, because if you draw yourself, for example, sitting, you take the size of your chair that I'm sitting on or whatever chair you like, you measure it with a ruler, you take it off the floor and you say, okay, if I want to sit that, where do I want my window to be? You know, and then you can design your window, not how they stand and design everywhere because you're a magician, you're God, you can have a window at any height you want. You can design a window really nice and low that when you sit in it you're not looking up and you're not seeing anything like usually you'd come into like a hotel the window is there you, you're sitting at your bed you can't see the view you know like to avoid those things this is where the scale drawing comes in and then you richly take the ruler you measure your chair you measure your spine how high am i from my butt yeah you take you take measuring tape you look go to your eye level and like if i relax okay and then you design your window according to that height like rudimentary things like that. That's the basics that you want to get. Sure. Or if you want to have it, if you want to have it, because the roof, if a roof allows you three and a half meters, maybe you want to have a little uh, a second story, like a one and a half story little thing that your kids can climb in. Will they be able to stand up there or not? That's where that, that drawing can help you, you know. Hey, Lush, okay. I have a question for you. Yeah. Can you kind of walk us through? I know you're saying at the end of next week, we're going to be downloading Rhino. And then at that point, we have 12 weeks of classes here. How how quick will it take us to get this particular drawing done? And how much time will we have to 
kind of it's a, our, our Jesse, it's, a, it's a very good question. That's why I wanted you to actually try and wrap up the whole uh, 2D part this week, if possible. Like all of it, all those little slices, boom, boom, boom. So we don't carry anything over into week three. And next Saturday, I'll do a vast two thing for you if all goes well. But the most important, yeah, we'll, we'll get you onto Rhino. You'll need to um, straight after download Rhino. Um, and let me show you. It's a very good question because, Jesse, the course is going to roll pretty fast. Um, what I mean is a lot of people, I'm not going to lie, a lot of people fell off because uh, basically I hammer away two lessons at a, a, every week. Um, during those two lessons that you watch and do yourself, you ask me questions, then that Saturday I help you. You know, there's not going to be, you know, like much God talk or any of that stuff uh, in the future unless, you know, we have some time and you guys, you know, want to plug into it and or I want to or I have something to share. But most importantly, if you go uh, um, into... Um, there's basically 19 lessons. Uh, I'm going to be hammering two lessons per week. And that's eight weeks. It's 18. Yeah, eight weeks is 16. Nine, nine weeks is 18 lessons. So nine weeks, you just have to we'll stick with me. Um, and we're going to be doing two lessons per week. And during the next week we're gonna we're not gonna return to those two lessons unless you have some questions i'll always help you obviously but you know um we're gonna go pretty rapidly i showed it last week so if you look um at uh, that yeah and apologies my internet is just really slow i'm gonna have to get fast internet when i when we get into this rhino thing I watch. I watched the video from last week, Alosha. So yeah, uh, look I, at that. I guess I'm just going to understand the pace a little bit. So it's going to move pretty fast. It it's going to move really, really fast. It's going to move really, really fast. Look at that. So can you see this? Um, lesson one, foundation outline. Uh, yeah. Then we're already drawing foundations and greenhouse. That's one week. Second week, 3D of the walls, drawing the react and sauna. That's week two of Rhino. You're already drawing the React and sauna. That's the brick, the brick uh, cylinder, and the sauna is that with sandbag sauna. Do you remember? Um, yeah, you, you know, you know the drawing we're drawing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's so that's not just a little egg. That's a whole sandbag sausages on top of it. So look at that. So this is this this is week two of Rhino. You'll do you you have all of this already up ready. And where people start falling off is they start falling off on one of these things. They don't catch up. They, they lose interest. Uh, and, you know, I'll be here until the last man is standing and I'll help you. But you need to be, you know, drawing. You need to be following the, the, the lessons. Uh, there's live support sessions if you're stuck um, from people like they, how to do these bricks, how to do the eggs. There's the sausages already being drawn. So... You you know, if you're still stuck after this lesson and the live support session, that's where I come in handy. And also during the week, so you don't have to wait for me on Saturday, I can help you with, like if somebody's stuck with something, then I'll help you to get through it. So you don't have to wait for Saturday with that one little issue. You know what I mean? I quickly jump on a call. I'll help you out five, 10 minutes. We get through that issue and then you go through with it. But provided that you watch the lesson you hear, heard my command there, whether I say you try to do it, it doesn't work, something doesn't make sense. You looked at the at you looked at the live support session. It also didn't answer your question. But it, it, it just reach out and you just reach out and then I'll help you. But it's gonna go pretty rapidly, pretty rapidly. Like you it's gonna be plenty. You need to allocate a few hours every week for it. I'm not gonna uh, lie. And um and 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 I'm here for twelve weeks to help you deeply with it. So use that time. Oh, well, Alasha, just quick question. I'm um, obviously I've not watched any of the uh, Rhino videos yet, but um, for somebody that's never used Rhino, um, when you first start doing the drawings, you're explaining in those but, lessons. 
Yeah, very good question. Let's do it next week. But basically, mm -hmm. very good question. Let me just show you. It's a very good question because... Um, I show you the whole rhino, um, let's call it the cockpit, <laughs> okay? I show yeah. you rhino cockpit in a lesson, uh, rhino intro lessons, there they are. Okay, so we're okay, so that's the first lesson is. that you, if you never ever touched rhino, um, I suggest that you go through all of these lessons uh, maybe that will be the work. Maybe you should, uh, yeah. In fact, this will probably be week, week one of Rhino. If you're just getting to know the interface, uh, yeah. Like there is a gumball tool. I, I, I got this guy, so so he, he explains how to. Obviously, um, it will be more than helpful that you uh, jump into Rhino. You get to know. And they, these are very similar lessons. I, I explained the cockpit in both of them. It's the same thing. We draw little circles, little cubes, uh, move them up, down, left, right, and and obviously. Um, okay. Yeah. So you I highly, I highly recommend. I highly recommend that you that you that you start playing with these things. Um, but you can do this in next week as well. You can do this. You can, yeah, you can do it the next week and then we can, um, and then you can draw, do those two lessons after you realize. But if you want to get ahead of yourself, very good question. I'd highly recommend that you watch um, the cockpit lesson, how how the Rhino cockpit works, because it's, it's easy, it's very intuitive, but it's still like, it's serious. It's a serious program. I'm not yeah. joking. <laughs> it's got it's a lot of buttons. Curve. You don't need to know all the buttons. Don't freak out. There's, we use probably about 25, 30% of the software and it's more than enough. Okay. Are, are you seeing or, or I'm not sharing the screen? No, no, I could just see you here. Yeah. Oh no, here's the screen. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, so there they are. Rhino intro lessons. Can you see? Mm -hmm. There they are. The next three lessons to get you start mucking about in Rhino. We'll do little spirals. I basically show you the cockpit. This is the cockpit. Can you see? Um, yeah. And and uh, move things out here. This is the second one. Also similar stuff. Um, a Rhino, a Rhino for 3D for Mac and PC. Um, that's the cracked version that you know you don't need to worry about now, but later we can get back to it. Uh, gumball tool, there is this guy, Rhino Essentials. He's got uh, so you can, oh, get, yeah, I've seen him, yeah, yeah, you can get ahead of yourself by looking at least at these few lessons. And uh, you know, what you put in is what you get out, but I don't, I don't expect you to go and start learning from other guys, but it will be helpful. It will be helpful if you're absolutely not getting like the like how Rhino works and my way of teaching maybe is not helping you. Maybe there's some other guy like this guy, you'll resonate better just to know the cockpit, just to know the cockpit. But uh, to draw the home, I believe that my lessons are more than sufficient to draw okay. this home that we're doing. Um, I believe that they're quite good. So, so, so... You know, you can jump onto these lessons if you got everything about paperwork already, and you don't. You feel like you you don't you don't want to do all of that. You can jump onto this uh, uh, as well straight away if you want. That's also a possibility. Okay, yeah. because you can always get back to the paperwork, for example. But if you because you'll have the course forever, you know, for as long as I'm keep on paying for Vimeo anytime, you know, or every year, keep on prolonging. So you can always get back to the paperwork. But if you during this week start jumping onto Rhino cockpit and start mucking about and, you know, just getting to know it, then at least next week when we all start drawing this home on Rhino, you already know where things are, you know, you could do that. But if you don't get to do it, if, if we stick to the program, then next week you'll have time to do that. But if you want to get a bit ahead of yourself, then you can already jump on this week.
and 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 do the paperwork later later just just like wherever yeah it, but understanding the value of paperwork very very Absolutely. important we n- i never jump onto rhino unless i n- have on paper a good top view and at least like side view or, or something like you know otherwise you come in the rhino and like what am i going to design and you waste time you waste time because the computer uses different brain cells or, you know so you close the computer you switch on some good music you light a candle you get a nice tea going and then you get into the mood to do the paperwork you guys Thank get you. me okay very important yeah but um yeah like for instance i might uh, concentrate concentrate on the uh one of the slices you know just to fully understand that i think that's a good step yeah. for me anyway yeah 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 anyway. Yeah, and next week we can then use this whole, you know, yeah. It's all in the program. Uh, you, you, sh- you should have enough time. But if you really absolutely never touched uh, any 3D program, then maybe jump on it this week already. At least watch, at least watch it and, 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 and st- download Rhino, start like, you know, mocking about yeah. it. You, you could. No, I just I used to have I used to have Google SketchUp's, and uh, then my computer did the blue screen of death, so I never got it again. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to get confused between that's that operating, um, sorry, that program and Rhino. You know, are they yeah. much alike or? So. Yeah. So if you feel like if you guys feel like you 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 you're gonna struggle in Rhino, then you could already start playing with it. Are Without- you saying Rhino is? in the lessons for us to download and ready to go? Uh, Rhino is ready for you to download from Rhino website, uh, mcneil.com. Okay, so, and then we need a certain sign-in code or whatnot, and that is in the lesson book? Uh, Say it again? Do we need some sort of code, password, or code to to sign up for it? No, they they email it to you. They give you a three months version free of charge. Okay. All right. They'll, they'll email it to you, the the um, the twelve digit uh, thingy. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Cool, guys. All right. We'll see you next week. Brilliant. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much, Alosha. Yeah. So homework is to finish all paperwork for the very least. If you want to get ahead of yourself, then start with Rhino, playing around with Rhino. But officially, only from next week. Okay. Thank you so much. Right, Bye, everybody. Okay. Cheers. Be well. See you next week. Bye. Yeah. Have a Bye. good one. Yeah, you too.